Home today. Oh, sorry about that, Justin. I was about a minute late, so apologies. Yeah. That's okay. I'll, I'll run back over these numbers this, just for a second here, uh, just so we make sure we get them in there. For anybody that joins us later, um, let's see. Um, Niawaptuk 40. Nianomtene is 50. Gotwatsomtene is 60. Again, you got that Gotwatso, like that six in there. Noaksomtene is 70. Again, you have that Noak, like seven. Schwatsomtene, 80. You have that Schwatso in there, like eight. Shaksomtene, you have that Shak in there, like nine. Shaksomtene for 90. And then goat walk is 100. Again, you have that 100 goat walk. So if you wanted to say 200, it'd be niche walk. Um, so for example, let's uh, let's go ahead and go through our one through 10 one more time since it wasn't recording there at the beginning. We'll go through them again, okay? Goat, niche, shwe, niao, nianen, goat watso, noak, schwatso, shak, madatso. And then backwards, madatso, shak, schwatso, noak, Gotwatso, Nianen, Niao, Shwe, Nish, Got. Good. Okay, and then let's go. Let's do our, we'll count from 10 up to 20 too. So, so it's Madatso Shech Got would be 11. Madatso Shech Nish is 12. Madatso Shech Shwe is 13. Madatso Shech Niao is 14. Madatso Shech Nianen is 15. So, what do you think 16 is? Anybody have any guesses what 16 would be if it's if Madatso Shech Nianen is, is 15, what do you think 16 might be? Any guesses out there? And that Shech is kind of, it kind of means and. Um, oh, sorry, the chat was disabled, I forgot. <laughs> uh, so any, uh, any guesses what uh, might be after 15? If Madatso Shech Nianen, what do you think the next one might be? Okay, yeah, might as well leave it going. Madatso Shech Gotwatso. That's it. You just 10 and 10 and 6. Madatso Shech Gotwatso. Yeah. And I get your Shech. I know the spelling was a little bit off, but that's okay. Good job. Wanetchina. So then 17, Madatso Shech Noak. Madatso Shech Schwatso. 18, Madatso Shech Shak. 19. And then at 20, it's Nishwaptuk. 21 would be Nishwaptuk Shech Got. And then 22, Nishwaptuk Shech Nish. Nishwaptuk Shech Shwe, 23. Nishwaptuk Shech Niao. Nishwaptuk Shech Nianen. Nishwaptuk Shech Gotwatso. Nishwaptuk Shech Noak. Nishwaptuk Shech Schwatso. Nishwaptuk Shech Shak. Schwaptuk, 30. So again, if you can get your one through 10 down and you can get these base words, this 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, you can talk quite, quite high in Potawami. You can count quite high in Potawami, is what I meant to say. Count quite high in Potawami. Because I mean, even like 100, you can say goat walk is 100, niche walk would be 200, so walk is 300, nyao walk, nyano walk, it just goes on and on. And then uh, goat sagos or goat osuk is 1,000. Goat sagos or goat osuk is 1,000. And midas wuk is one that people use sometimes for a million. It's really just a large number, midas wuk. If you're getting that high, you might as well just say jash, jash, lots, jash. <clears throat> okay let me see do we have any questions anybody have any questions now if this chat box is open for now if you got any questions please don't hesitate to uh, put them in there <clears throat> okay. folks feel free to either ask questions in the q a or the chat box we'll try and keep an eye on it yep let me see if there's anything up in q a nope okay we got a few more folks that popped in that's good okay so we're moving on from that that's a little thing with numbers again if you get your one through 10 down, you're on your way to, to moving forward. I'm just acting weird here. I can't see my, oh, there it is. Well, Justin's getting this pulled <laughs> up. I'll just let everybody know. We'll we'll have this uh, recorded. We'll try and get it on YouTube, uh, the, the Tribal YouTube, uh, and Justin can share the links on Facebook here by, by next week, hopefully. So uh, no set date yet, uh, but we will try and get it up as soon as possible. We'll, we'll let everybody know. Miigwech, miigwech. That's good, miigwech. <clears throat> okay. So now we've got some Wisnowen or Mijim, some food words. Wisnowen and Mijim, they both mean food. Amo zispaquet. Amo zispaquet is honey. Amo zispaquet. What do you think amo might be? Anybody have any, anybody out there know a little part of me? What's that amo? Anybody know what that is? Amo zispaquet. Amo zispaquet. <clears throat> B, yes. Uh -huh. So it's literally like B sugar. That zispaquet is like, is like sugar, 
sometimes it's that 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 stuff that we tap out of trees because old school when we used to to sweeten our food we always used maple syrup to to sweeten our food so when our people got removed on the trail of death uh, down into Kansas and eventually into Oklahoma you can no longer tap trees down here so that kind of took that away from us but that's how we traditionally seasoned most of our food was with that maple syrup <clears throat> anjas anjas is an orange anjas anjas bobble anjas bobble orange juice Anjes bobble. And you'll notice that a lot of liquids they have like a bobble or a wobble or a nobble at the end, that abo indicating that it's liquid like. <clears throat> Beto Pequeshgan. Beto Pequeshgan is a sandwich. Beto Pequeshgan. Literally, it's in between two pieces of bread. It's like layered between. Beto Pequeshgan. So, Mesize Beto Pequeshgan, a turkey sandwich. Bidi Beto Pequeshgan, a chicken sandwich. Gapzot. Are, is a chip, gapsot, gapsojuk, or chips, gapsojuk. Daemon is a strawberry, daemon. De is your heart. And that daemon, when you cut it in half, it looks a lot like a heart. So it's like a heart berry, daemon. And you'll see that men on a lot of our, uh, on several of our berries and some of our other uh, vegetables, that men. And that men kind of indicates like a berry or a seed. Dekyak. Dekyak is ice cream. Dekyak. Kop cow soyuk. Kop cow soyuk is popcorn. Kop cow soyuk. Okay, I got a question. A good deal. Will the PowerPoint be? <laughs> if you would like the PowerPoints, I'll be happy to send them to you. I can send them to you after the class. Uh, if you want to put your email in the chat thing, because I think otherwise I think it might disappear. If you want to put your email in the chat thing, I think um, John's going to put my email down later. If you want to just uh, send me an email and, and let me know. I'll send them to you afterwards. Yeah, folks, uh, on the other end, if you go to the chat, I just put Justin's uh, email address there in the chat. Jay Neely. At you got an extra E, sir. Oh, did I add the extra E? I will. Hold on. Yeah. I'll, I'll, I'll get it here in a second. <laughs> it was. It's the end of the day, right? Yeah, that's true. Eh, that's okay. <laughs> uh, okay, so where were we? Bagaji Wiesnowin. Bagaji Wiesnowin, a snack, literally a little bit of food. Bagaji is like a little bit. So you can use that if you're saying, somebody said to you, hey, Shonya Megadeton, you got some money? Eh, Bagaji, a little bit. Bagaji. Or Mthano Bagaji, only a little bit. Mthano Bagaji. Or you could say Mbokshka, broke. Mbokshka. But that's not on the slide. So I apologize. Sometimes I see certain words and it reminds me of other words. So Mbop. Mbop is soup. Bidi Mbop is chicken soup. Bidi Mbop. Penny Wabo is potato soup, pen is potato, penny wobble, damnabo, damnabo is corn soup, damnabo, <clears throat> kotagasen, kotagasen is macaroni, this is a prairie band word for it, kotagasen, and then wajashkamdes, wajashkamdes is macaroni, specifically that elbow type, wajashkamdes, wajashkamdes, kapi is coffee, now, there are certain letters that we don't have in our language. You don't have the letters F, L, um, R, X. We don't have those letters in our language. So a lot of times, you know, words became potawatomized. So you'll see names like Mary that has an R in it becomes Mani. Something like coffee becomes, co you know, is potawatomized to copy because we don't have that F sound. So copy. Pequeshgan. Pequeshgan is bread. Pequeshgan. Webjide. Webjide, it should say store bought, says store bow. Store bought bread, webjide. Zio sechkin, zio sechkin is sour bread. Now, the difference between pequeshgin and webjide is that pequeshgin is literally more like that loaf of bread. So you would like bake a loaf of bread, and then it's, it's because you're able to cut off slices of it. You're able to cut it off. That's what that pequeshge is talking about, being able to cut it off. That webjide is more like it rises up. You know, it's that, and it's, it's that store-bought bread that then is, is in slices already. So webjide. Ziosechkin, that ziose has to do with something sour. Ziosechkin, so it's that sour bread. There's other types of bread, obviously, like pugna. Pugna is a, is a, is a Potawatomi cornbread. And there's actually a video that we have on our um, server that shows how to make pugna. It's a great dish if you've never made it. Um, komabo, a komabo. Makom abo, or in some communities they'll say makwem abo, makwem abo, 
ice water, mkwemabo or mkomabo. Mbish is water, mbish. And a lot of those letters, a lot of times when we have two consonants on a word and then a vowel right after that, um, sometimes that initial M or N, or sometimes it's even a P, is kind of a semi-silent. So you don't say that, that letter is loud. So you don't hardly even hear it sometimes. So it's like, you almost don't hear the M on mbish, mbish. But you have to know it's there because if I said, hey, go grab some water, not an imbish, not an imbish, then you hear that M a little more clearly. Bish, bish. In fact, we have a drive down here, uh, here on, uh, in Shawnee. It's called Bish Drive, and it right, but runs right by our water tower. Bish Drive. So, napane, napane is flower. Napane, napane. And I have heard some people use Pequegian when referencing flower too, but napane flour. No puan. No puan is a lunch that you pack, like a sack lunch. No puan. No puan. Okay. Any questions? Do you have a question? Type it in a minute. Yeah, if anybody has any questions, ask any questions. <clears throat> Give it a second here just in case anybody had any questions. Okay. Okay, moving on, folks. Oh, actually, I'll go through these words one more time so you can hear them. Please try to uh, try to repeat them where you're at, and that'll help you remember them. Hey, okay. So we'll just say it one more time here. Wisnuen or medium is food. Wisnuen or medium. Amo zispaquet, amo zispaquet, honey. Anjes, anjes, an orange. Anjes babo, anjes babo, orange juice. Bito pequejgen, bito pequejgen, a sandwich. Msize bito pequejgen. Misize bito pequejgen, a turkey sandwich. Bidi bito pequejgen, a chicken sandwich. Bidi bito pequejgen. Gapzot, gapzot, chip. Gapzojuk, chips. Gapzojuk, literally they're talking about the crispiness of them. Damon, damon, strawberry. Damon, damonen, strawberries. Damonen, strawberries. Dekyak, ice cream. Dekyak. Kap kao so yuk. Kap kao so yuk. Popcorn, cup cow, soya. Bagaji, we snowin, a snack, literally a little bit of food. Bagaji, we snowin. Bop, bop, soup, bop. Bidim bop, chicken soup, bidim bop. Penny wobble, potato soup, penny wobble. Dum nobble, dum nobble, corn soup, dum nobble. Kotagasen, kotagasen, macaroni, or Wajashkum des, wajashkum des. Kapi, kapi, kapi. Pequejgen, pequejgen. Webjede, webjede, store bought bread, webjede. Zio sechkin, zio sechkin, sour bread, zio sechkin. Makomabo, makomabo. Makwemabo, another way to say it, makwemabo. Mbish, mbish, mbish. Napane, napane, flour. No puan, no puan, sack lunch. <clears throat> now, for my own personal experience, I think one of the easiest things for you to do to start really incorporating the language and remembering the language is start using it around the house. For example, in my house, we never say water. My kids only say bish. So, and I'll say, not an im bish, you know, grab me some bish. And when I tell my kids it's time to eat, I always say, be a wee snook, come eat, be a wee snook. Um, or I ask them, you know, are y'all hungry? So if you start using the language in your household like that, and it can start one word at a time, you know, just start by just certain words. You learn the word for water, bish. You just don't say water anymore. You say bish. You learn the word for pop, wish kebabo. You just say wish kebabo. You're a big coffee drinker. You learn kapi. That's what you call it from here on out, kapi. The only time that'll get you in trouble is when you go to the Sonic drive in and you forget about that and you start saying, you say it in Potom, you're like, oh, wait a minute, I meant to say that in English. <laughs> I did that one time. So, Justin, anyway, does everybody, does everybody in the call have a Sonic there? <laughs> For real, Sonic's pretty. That's a good call. Sure. Sonic might not be there. Sonic is definitely an Oklahoma um, original, but it's got a world, I guess, worldwide. I don't know if it's in every state. Uh, that's an I don't know. I know it's in Missouri. Okay, wow, moving on. Got my Sonic drink now. L O T. T is actually really simple in Palmy. We just say T. That's all we do. We just say T. So T is T. So T is simple. Eh. <laughs> That's kind of funny. 
Okay, Ciotagen or Citagen salt, Ciotagen or Citagen salt, Waskuk pepper, Waskuk pepper. Wow is an egg. Now this is one little dialect difference. There's some dialect differences between North and South occasionally. Occasionally there's a different word. That's just a matter of separation. You know, when we got down to Kansas, you know, there was a good 50, 60, 70 years between before we started really re kind of regrouping together. The last 20 some years we've had, uh, 25 or so years, we've had these larger Potawatomi gatherings. And in case some of you may not realize this, there are actually seven unique groups of Potawatomi in the United States and two in Canada. So you have the citizen Potawatomi, the Shishibaniak that's down here in Oklahoma. You have the Prairie Band Potawatomi, Mishkodaniak up in uh, Kansas. You've got the Forest County Potawatomi, Kasinyaniak uh, up uh, in Wisconsin, in Crandon, Wisconsin. You have the, uh, let's see, Wigwas, Zib Wigwas Zibiniak, the Hannaville Potawatomi up in uh, kind of Bark River, uh, Wisconsin, or not Wisconsin, Michigan. Um, up toward Escanaba, Michigan. You've got the Machapaneshi Wishniuk, Gun Lake Potawatomi, also called the Bad Bad Bird Potawatomi, up in, uh, there's like three of them within like a 90 mile radius up in uh, the southwest corner of Michigan. Polkaniuk, the Polkagan Potawatomi, down by Dewajiak and um, South Bend, Indiana. You've also got Natawasipi, Natawasipi Niuk, the Huron Potawatomi is over there in, um, Oh goodness, what is it? Not Grand Rap, kind of like by Grand Rapids, but it's to the east of, uh, kind of closer to Detroit. And then in Canada, you have the Walpole Island uh, Potawatomi's and uh, Wissaxing um, up in uh, Perry Sound, uh, Ontario. So there's lots of, and for the last 25 or so years, we've been getting together as a larger Potawatomi group. Yeah, we got Whataburger down here. <laughs> okay, so. I don't think he was asking a question. I think he was complimenting us on having them. Oh, okay. Yeah, you're right. Miigwech. <laughs> That's true. We do have Whataburger. Now, egg is a funny word. So in the South, they say wow. And in Wisconsin, they'll, they'll say wow in for one egg. Well, in the South, we say wow in for more than one egg. And they say wow known in the North for eggs, plural. So if you said wow in up in uh, Wisconsin, they might just give you one egg. Or you might want a bunch of eggs. But don't worry, it'll you'll get it figured out. Because if you say wowin, you're probably going to say you know niche niche wowin, two eggs, or you know meow wowin, four eggs, or whatever. But I like the word wow because it reminds me of this this commercial they used to play on TV way back in the day, and this dates me a little bit. They used to have this commercial, the incredible edible egg. So the like wow, because that's how the egg the word for egg sounds wow, and it's kind of talking about the kind of that circular kind of semicircular shape to the egg. Not necessarily, and I, mean, I know it's an oval, but it's circular right there. So, wow, that incredible edible egg. And that circular shape is interesting because that word, like, wow, yasto is a tornado. It's talking about that circular motion of that wind, wow, yasto. So our language is very descriptive in nature. Um, and so when people say, you know, how can you have a word for that in your language? You know, you didn't have contact with this or that. Because our language is so descriptive, you certainly can have uh, a way of describing, you know, like a computer, tazom kakos, it's that, that little box that, that, you, um, that you put information in, that you store information in, tazom kakos. But you can also describe in other ways. Other people say, wijob no taksh, again, it's that, that device that makes sound that also, um, that you're able to create, uh, create things on. Maybe that's a Mac, I don't know. <laughs> no, but... Uh, Wabozo we snowin salad. Wabozo we snowin. Sometimes words come in the language like this. Somebody just says a word and it catches on. This is kind of a, a slangy way of saying salad. Literally rabbit food. Wabozo we snowin. Wabozo we snowin. Zionos. Zionos is a raisin. Okay, I got a question. Good deal. I'm gonna kind of summarize the question when you get a chance there, Justin. Okay. I would say uh, the Potawatomizing of words, it's just kind of, it's kind of, it, there's different uh, schools of thought on bringing words into a language. One thing that I can tell you is sometimes what happens is a word is brought forward. For example, a word that used to be something else that's no longer used kind of moves forward, if you will. A great example of that is Dabion. Dabion is a car today. In the past, it used to be used for a wagon. 
it literally is talking about like dragging something. So even before wagon, it was probably more like those uh, those little traverse type things that like that look like a triangle that they used to attach to like horses or before that even the dog um, that would carry your belongings and move from one location to other. So some things can come forward from an older word, maybe that's not being used any used anymore. But then you also you can look at some of these words here like kakshayabo, kadewabo. I mean, they're all acceptable ways of talking about. Kakshewabo is really more like coffee that you cook over the coals. It's more like uh, uh, the, the word I heard called was the speaker used was cowboy coffee. So I mean, that's probably not the best way of describing, but it's it's because that kukshe has to do with the the ashes or the coals. And I'm assuming because you're getting some of those ashes into your into your coffee when you cook it over the over the fire. So that's that kukshayabo, that mkadewabo, you know, that black liquid. That's a good word for it. Well, I've also heard that that's this medicine drink, another word for cop coffee. So um, I guess my answer to that is um, to explain what you're at. It just kind of depends. It really is like anything else. Language kind of takes hold. What catches on catches on. Sometimes it's easier to just potawatomize a word because to explain it would be so long. A great example of that would be like pizza. Like if you tried to explain a pizza to me, because our language is very descriptive, you'd have to have a separate way of talking about a pepperoni versus a hamburger versus a Hawaiian pizza versus a same with pie. Uh, a lot of times Ojibwe speakers, which Ojibwe is close to Potawatomi, will joke that pie is the longest word in Ojibwe. They have a word for it, but it's like it's like that long because you have to describe each type of pie. So you don't have just a generic pie. You have a blueberry pie, a blackberry pie, an apple pie, and you have to change each of those based on what, what it is. So it just kind of depends. It depends, number one, if it's something that can be easily described quickly. Um, sometimes it's just it's just easier just to potawatomize it. So it's kind of a, it kind of just depends. And whatever kind of takes hold is really what it comes down to. Because uh, if somebody starts using wabolzo wisnuin for salad, and somebody else has a different word for maybe explaining the leaves or something like that, or that it go into the salad because salad's kind of complicated if you think about it. Because, I mean, your idea of a salad and my idea of a salad is not always the same. You may put tomatoes, onions, jalapenos, banana peppers. I don't know. You may put Caesar salad dressing. You know, so because the language is so descriptive, sometimes it makes it complicated if it's a general, it's kind of a generic type like thing. But if it's something real specific. Sometimes it's easier to to coin a word that really covers it. So, real long answer to a somewhat complicated question. I apologize. So, there you but, go, Justin. I'm I think there. a good you're you're a pretty good resource too because if you were using these kind of in your normal day to day life using just English, which I think is a lot of people's uh, mother tongue right now, but you know you would be a good resource resource to bounce these ideas off of, or at least kind of come to you. Are there some other resources people could kind of look up these if they had yeah. come across a word? Yeah, absolutely. If you have a question about certain words, we can definitely talk about it. And you know, and there are different speakers in different communities that we can kind of like, you know, run things off and see what they think of. We used to get together every year for a Potawatomi uh, language conference, which is a great time to kind of talk about those things. But with the COVID, we haven't had the gathering uh, last year. We're not having it this year either. So, um, but yeah, that's how any word comes into a language anyway. It just kind of becomes accepted terminology. So, Jajakwagen, Jajakwagen is a hamburger, Jajakwagen. And that's actually literally talking about like pressing down. Like it's talking about how you press down that patty, that hamburger you're making. Jashag wagon. Jashag panik. Jashag panik. Mashed potatoes. Again, press down, mash down. Jashag panik. Jashko kwetak pakwejgen. Fry bread. Jashko kwetak pakwejgen. And this word is long for a lot of people. They're like, oh man. What I really like is our is at our um, fry bread taco place that we have at the Tribones. They have a lot of the language on the menu if you ever go in there and eat in Shawnee. So like bagoch bashuk gawias, bison meat, um, like zasko kwetak pakwejgen, fry bread. They have different words like that up on the menu, which is kind of cool, I think. I appreciate seeing the language like that, and hopefully we can put it in more ways. Zasko kwetuk is another way people will just sometimes say it just to kind of shorten it, kind of slang. That literally just means something that's fried. But if you don't want to say zasko kwetuk pakwejgen, I get it. You just say zasko kwetuk, or you just say, hey, mishini pakwejgen, give me that bread. It's all in context. You know, if you're standing in front of somebody that's got a bunch of bread, you can just say pakwejgen, they'd get it. So, yeah, fried bread taco. Zio bagos, zio bagos is lettuce, zio bagos. 
Wish kebabo is pop. Wish kebabo. I don't know. Wish kebabo has always been one of my favorite words. I like the kind of the way it rolls off my tongue. Wish kebabo. Wish kebabo. And again, that's a word that I always use for pop. I don't ever, when I'm talking in the house, I always use wish kebabo. You know, no yeah, knock. Justin, no, Justin uh, you should clarify that your Kansas City upbringing refers to what we all down here in Oklahoma refer to Coke as pop. Because I. <laughs> that's a solid point there, sir. We do have folks here from all over the country. And definitely, I know in some regions it's soda. Sometimes it's soda pop. Sometimes it's uh, Coke for all, all of those type beverages. Um, that's definitely true. I did grow up in Kansas City. So funny thing about that is in, in St. Louis, it was soda. So this from the state line from Kansas City, Missouri to to Kansas City or St. Louis, Missouri, it changed yeah. pop to soda. So amen. Yeah. Uh -huh. So it could be Coke, it could be soda, it could be pop. So that's funny. No nakneabo or no nagnabo or dodo shabo. Here he goes, an example of three ways to say milk. No nakneabo, no nagnabo, and dodo shabo. Um, no knock nabo is more of a southern way of saying it. No nag nabo uh, is more of a, a northern way. And then dodo shabo is the way kind of it's more in Canada. You'll hear more like dodo shabo. Chaco not no knock nabo. Here's a great example of a potawatomized word. Chaco not no knock nabo. Chocolate milk. Chaco not no knock nabo. Um, you know, potawatomy, we don't have the L. Um, so chaco not. That L instead of that, that N kind of replaces it. Again, could we have come up with a word for chocolate, perhaps? But how do you describe chocolate, really? I mean, do you talk about the, the richness of it, the sweetness of it, the coloration, maybe the way it melts in your hand? I mean, there's, it's kind of complicated. You could, you could explain it, but it might be kind of complicated. Maybe you want to talk about like how the sweetness of it, of it like washkabuk is candy, but chocolate, no knock neable. Myself, when I'm trying to get something across that real precise uh, or real fast, sometimes it's easier to, to use that potawatomized type version, chaconat. Bokmen nabo, bokmen nabo, cranberry juice, bokmen nabo, and bokmen is a cranberry, bokmen nabo, cranberry juice. Mishim nabo, mishim nabo is apple juice, mishim nabo. Msize wias, msize wias is turkey, turkey meat, literally. Pene wias is another way to say it. Pene wias. Bidi wias is chicken meat. Again, if you don't have the wias on there and you use it like masize or you use bidi um, and you're talking about like eating and you don't have something like soup or something attached to it, it's almost like you're grabbing hold of a chicken and just huh, and just biting down on it. So it's like, like unless you eat things whole or live, um, that really wouldn't work. So, <laughs> so you got to make sure you put that weos to indicate that it's some kind of meat. Um, <laughs> Bidi weos, bagoch pashukke weos, bison bagoch pashukke weos, suksi weos, venison suksi weos. And suksi is a funny word. I, I Several years ago when I was teaching in the daycare, I remember uh, I was talking to this, uh, this teacher down there and she told me that one of the parents had come up to her and was like, uh, um, who, who says Mr. Justin? And I said, oh, that's the language guy that comes in and teaches our kids. And she said, well, why has he been telling my daughter that she's sexy? And thankfully, the teacher had been paying attention. And no, no, it's sexy. Sexy is a deer. They were teaching them animal words, sexy. Apparently, her daughter came home saying it, but she was saying sexy. So the funny story about that is there's several ways to talk about a deer. We kind of stopped using sucksy in the daycare because of that, but you can say wawash keshi, talking about how it bounds away, or yabe, a buck, or nijan, a doe, but kind of funny. Some of our words, sometimes they sound like other things in English. Uh, so, bagoch pashukke weas, sucksy weas, venison, and mbade, mbade. Mbade is obviously one that was potawatomized, and it was one that was potawatomized a long time ago. I've never seen another representation of butter, so mbade, mbade. So you have some that are part on. I kind of go with 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 the field of school or the school of thought. If if it's simple to 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 translate it the way what it does or how it acts, then we should go that direction. If it's really long and complicated, sometimes it's easier just to potawatomize something. So, how I'd rather potawatomize it than say butter so, or or chocolate. I'd rather say chocolate not. So, okay. So now we got some kitchen turn. Oh, and I forgot to mention I who was in that, uh, this last little uh, picture, you got me over here in the garden. This is our community garden, our, our uh, Getagan Widok Tadwin, our community garden, and that's Robert uh, Collins, another gentleman that works in our language department. 
if you go to our kids course on Friday, you'll get a chance to listen to Robert. Um, and then that's me over there. And we're working with some of the, uh, some of the plants. They're doing a little bit of weeding. Come around. <clears throat> Justin, what's the name of your, of the, the, like some of your, the Facebook group and those kinds of things that you, I know you're going to mention oh, at the end. Yeah, just yeah. Bo, um, it's Bodwe Wad Meme One. Bodwe Wad Meme One. Or you can look up just Potawatomi language and you should find it too. Bodwe Wad Meme One or Potawatomi language. Those are the Facebook uh, groups, right? Or pages. Yeah. Gotcha. That's Facebook gotcha. Page, yeah. And, and usually we've, we've been doing some pretty regular um, beginner classes on Monday, Wednesdays, and Fridays uh, around nine o'clock. And then on Tuesdays and Thursdays, I've been doing an intermediate class about two o'clock. There will be a little hiatus here probably in the next week or so because I'm actually going on vacation. But when I come back, we'll definitely be doing some more. And for those of you that live local, we do plan on doing some on-site classes this year now that the COVID is starting to kind of temper down. We, we'll still use some safety precautions probably separate the tables out and things like that um, and ask that everybody, you know, check their temperature on the way and things like that. And uh, if you haven't been vaccinated, obviously we'd ask that you'd wear a mask, but probably late summer, early fall, we'll be having some classes here at the Heritage Center again. So I'm excited to, to get back to that. I miss that uh, that face-to-face -face interaction. So I'm sure a lot of you do too. Was Jean Dao Gamuk, was Jean Dao Gamuk or Eja was Jean Doc is the kitchen. With Jean Dalgamuk or Edja with Jean Doc is the kitchen, literally the place where you cook. And this young lady here in the corner, this is Reagan Marcy. This is also uh, someone who works in our in our language department. Again, we've got a great staff of folks: Reagan Marcy, Shelby Hobai, um, Randy Shalacton, and uh, Robert Collins. They all work with the language, and they teach the little kids in our child development center. And they've also been doing a lot of artwork on some books that we're doing that we should have coming out. Uh, in the next year or so. Noggin is dish, noggin. Desnoggin is a, is a plate, literally a flat dish. That des has to do with flat, desnoggin. Desnagas is a saucer or a platter, like a smaller dish, desnagas. Mquan is a spoon, mquan. And that quan is talking about the shape right here, this kind of like semicircular type shape. Like a wheel quan is a hat wheel quan. When it goes over your head, it kind of goes like this, weoquan. Weoquan is another example of a word that's kind of moved up in, from the past, if you will. Today, we use it when we're talking about any type of hat. Old school, wheel has to do with a wrapping. So it's more like, like a turban type wrap that you may have seen on some of those George Winter uh, paintings that people would wear on their heads that how it wraps around in that. Again, that's that shape kind of like this. It wraps around, you could take it off and it'd still be in that shape. So that's that quan part of it. Mquan is a spoon. Napquan is a sailboat. Nap has to do with something hanging down. Nap in that shape again, that, that kind of shape where when, when a, the wind has kind of got it full, kind of full, it's a full mast or full, when it's out like that in that shape, Napquan. So <clears throat> again, our language is very, very descriptive. That's one thing that's different with English. Like with English, you could ask me like, what does something literally mean? I could tell you know that you know biology is the study of life or different ologies mean the study of this or study of that. But you go outside of that because English has borrowed so many words from so many different languages, it's hard to under you, you know, as a first language speaker of English, you're not gonna necessarily know what something literally means unless you're like a, a wordsmith or you're really into the etymology of words. But with Potawatomi, you can start to see these things inside of the of the patterns. You can see the the words inside of them. And a lot of times when a, when a noun ends in a gun or a win, there's usually a verb almost inside of it. For example, dope win down here is table. Dope way means to place food on something. Dope way is to place, or excuse me, dope oh, not dope way. Dope o oh is to place food on something. And then uh, dope win is a table. And uh, degoj, degojigen is a blender. Degojige means to, to mix things up. So gen means like a thing that you mix things up with. So you know, you start to see these parts inside of these words. Uh, that's that's really fascinating stuff. And it really, I like to say that the language is kind of a portal to the past. It allows us to see what was important to our ancestors, what continues to be important to us as Potawatomi people today. And uh, it's an amazing thing. The more the language you learn, the more the culture you learn, because, it, you know, you often hear people say, you know, our, it's our history, our stories, our blood, our food, our regalia, our dance. 
you know, all these things that make us puddling, but the language is really the thread that kind of ties it all together. So, Justin, uh, I think, and this is something you and I've talked with when we've worked on articles in the newspaper, but let me explain a little bit about why actually having a language is important for the tribal sovereignty aspect in terms of, of being recognized by the, by the federal government. Absolutely. I mean, to, one of the things, I mean, in the 1950s, the, the federal government did a lot of work trying to terminate tribes, uh, and they actually were successful on terminating some tribes. Some of them have since managed to get their federal recognition back. Some never did. And one of the things that they really looked at with tribes when, to decide, you know, hey, are you your own unique people was, you know, do you have your own language? Do you have a language that's uniquely yours? Because if we don't have a unique language and unique culture, then it's almost like, well, who are you? You're no longer, you know, you're no longer Potawatomi people. You're now just these people that are descended from people that used to be Potawatomi, you know, and that's exactly why the federal government took our children away from us and put, put them in boarding schools, you know, many years ago. And even some of that even went up into the 80s in some areas of the country, but took our kids away, put them in boarding schools hundreds of miles from home, left them there till they're 18, brought them back because they came back, they had lost their language, they had lost a lot of their culture, lost a lot of this knowledge they had. But for us also, the trail of death had that same effect. When we came down from our original homelands up in uh, Michigan, the Great Lakes, and made our way down here, you know, we lost a lot along the way. And some of the plants and things that we interacted with don't exist down here. So we couldn't continue some of those things. But, you know, our culture, our language is, is central to our identity as who we are as, as Potawatomi people, as Nishnabe people. In fact, that word Nishnabe is our original word for ourselves. You know, we call ourselves Potawatomi, but uh, Nishnabe has a more of a literal meaning. If you go back to the original Anishinaabe, it talks about why place man down, ani, why, nis, like downward, nabe, man or mankind. So kind of like why place man down? What is mankind's purpose, if you will? What is our purpose? You hear it translated different from different people. Some people say it's the people. Some people will say people of good intentions. But that's one uh, interpretation that I got from an elder that I thought was pretty interesting. And that's the word that's on our seal, you know, nishnabe, you know. You know, Potawatomi people, Nishinaabek, our original word for ourselves. And a lot of tribes are like that. You know, they may be known by the general population as Winnebago, but they call themselves the Hochun or the Cherokees. I believe they call themselves Tasagi, I think, like that. Um, they have a different name that they call themselves as well. So, anyway, that's enough ramble for a second. Let me get back into these, or I'm going to run myself out of time. Koman, Koman is a knife, Koman. Baduk Jigan, Baduk Jigan is a fork, Baduk Jigan. Zaskokwan is a frying pan. Again, it's got that shape. Some that fries something that's got that shape. Zaskokwan. Bapakshigan. Bakakshigan. Bakakshigan. A can opener. Dagojigan. Dagojigan. Excuse me. Dagojigan. 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 A blender. Dopwin. Dopwin. A table. Dopwin. Dopwagon. Dopwagon is a tablecloth. Dopwagon. Dopwegas, Dopwegas is a placemat, Dopwegas. Gwek, Gwek Mabagin, excuse me, Gwek Mabagin, Gwek Mabagin, a spatula, something that flips something over, Gwek Mabagin. Guabagas, Guabagas is a cup, literally kind of a small cup, uh, but a lot of times I'll just use Guabagas for all cups myself. Guabagin is maybe like a little bigger size cup, Guabagin. Jishtigan, Jishtigan is a broom, Jishtigan, and Jishtige is the verb to, to, to sweep. Jiptabwen is a chair, Jiptabwen is a chair, Jiptabe is the verb to sit, so it's a thing you sit on, Jiptabwen. Uh, so if you tell somebody sit down, you say Jiptaben, everybody sit down, Jiptabuck. So you see those, those parts inside of our words. Okay, moving forward here. Not getting very far, I don't know what slide I'm on, but okay. Buktane. Go here's some here's a little bit more a little more umph to it, a little some sentences. Gabuktane, gabuktane. Are you hungry? Gabuktane. One thing to notice here is that ne kind of indicates a question. It's a simple question. And it's almost always the second thing in a in a in a sentence is that ne. And again, it's for a simple question that you'll use to get a yes-no type response. You know, you don't get a why are you hungry or where are you gonna go eat. That's a more complicated, more depth type question. Now, don't get me wrong. We all know somebody where you ask them a simple question, you get a 35 page you know, report about their life. But 
for the most part, it just says, you know, are you hungry? It's like a yes, no type response. Gabakdane, gabakdane, are you hungry? And with Potawatomi, you kind of go down. In English, a lot of times we're kind of moving up on a question like, hey, are you coming? Are you going to be there? When, when are you coming over? You know, we kind of go up when we're asking a question a lot of times. Potawatomi, you either keep kind of a baseline or even just kind of a dip down as a smidge. And that's something that as a first language speaker, even myself, I have to constantly remind myself of that, especially if I get really talking fast. I have to think about that sometimes. Bakdane, gabakdane. Are you hungry? Konage, mbakde. Konage, mbakde. Yeah, I'm hungry. Konage, mbakde. Nagonandam, I'm starving. Nagonandam, I'm starving. Nagonandam. Nagio nandam, I'm dizzy from hunger. Nagio nandam, I'm dizzy from hunger. And again, you've just seen the parts inside the word. Nagio shkwe means I'm dizzy. Nagio shkwe. Now, if you said that you were gio shkwe bie, gio shkwe bie is like is like dizzy from drink. It's like drunk. Gio <laughs> shkwe bie, you're dizzy from from drinking. So you can add these parts to, to words, and you can see the parts inside of other words. That the nandum is the the hunger part. The gio shkwe is the dizzy part. Jishuk nagi wisen, jishuk nagi wisen. I just ate. Jishuk nagi wisen, gabak tamne, gabak tamne. Are you all hungry? Gabak tamne, gabak tamne. Are you all hungry? Gagashkana bagwene, gagashkana bagwene. I know that word sounds like a mouthful for thirsty, but I guarantee you can say this because my daughter can say this. My daughter, I'll ask her gagashkana bagwene, and she'll answer eh, gagashkana bagwene, and she's. And she's just turned six. So I'm actually my, my almost five-year-old can say it too. So I know you can say it. So don't, don't be intimidated by the length of some of the words. You know, just got to work at it slowly and be patient with yourself. You know, you can definitely do this. Gagashkana bagwene. Gagashkana bagwene. Are you thirsty? Eh, nagashkana bagwe. Eh, nagashkana bagwe. Now, eh, or konage, they both mean yes in Potawatomi. Konage, you tend to hear more in the south, but people know it in the north as well. Eh, uh -huh, it's just another way to say yeah, yeah to say yes. Wek nija bidik ektoyen i kakos. What do you have in your fridge? Another way to say fridge is makwimi tazwin. This is a great example of what we were talking about earlier with words. Sometimes certain words, because we were separated for a long time, kind of took off in certain communities, so they kind of use them that particular word for it, but it's still descriptor, it still describes. Maquim and Makom both, you know, they both mean ice. Kuk is like a box. Kuko is like a little box. So literally it's like a little ice box is what it's saying. Um, kom kakos. The G on the front just means yours. And then Maquimi Tazwin, Tazwin, Tazo has to do with something you store or put stuff up. Um, it's even in that word for that computer, that Taz. So it's an ice, and so Tazwin is also used for like a closet or a cabinet. So it's like an ice cabinet is kind of what it's saying. So kom kakos or makwemi Tazwin. But because, you know, once you start to learn some of the language, you can see what they're literally saying. So it's not really an issue if somebody uses a little different way of talking about it. So Weknesia Ned Windeman. Weknesia Ned Windeman. What do you want? With six kids, I ask this a lot. Weknesia Ned Windeman. Weknija with Jean Dayan. Weknija with Jean Dayan. What are you cooking? Weknija with Jean Dayan. Gazian e dopwin, bawamshe a wisniak. Gazian e dopwin, bawamshe a wisniak. Wipe off the table before we eat. Gazian is telling somebody, wipe it off that table, e dopwin, bawamshe before a wisniak, we, we eat. Be a wisnuk. Be a wisnuk. Everybody come eat. Be a wisnuk. Or, and then be a wee snin, telling one person, just come eat, be a wee snin. So like when I yell up the stairs to my kids, <clears throat> I'll say, be a wee snook, be a wee snook, come eat. And then if they're at the table and they're not eating, you just say, you know, you can just say, we snin, telling one of them eat, or all of them say, we snook. They're just sitting there looking at their food, we snook. Can up and a te kaboyam get imbop. Can up and a te kaboyam get imbop. Can up. And some of these words, you just get used to saying, and eventually they start to flow a little easier on your tongue. The more you get used to them, the more you hear them. I promise you it gets easier. And some words, you know, you use all the time. So you say them, if it tends to just say them fast. 
sometimes I have to just slow myself down a little bit. Like can up, I say all the time. It means like hurry up. I always yell at my kids, hurry up, can up, can up, can up. And that one actually works for singular or plural, can up. <clears throat> that NA means it's it's starting to become the kaboyam get it's starting to become cool or cold. Imbo, that soup. Can up and they take kaboyam get imbo. Can up and they take kaboyam get imbo. Okay. Now, <clears throat> a little explanation for you about something that makes our language a little different from English. This might seem a little heavy to you, but it's kind of important to understand. Like in English, if I said I'm going to eat, eat, it doesn't matter. I can say eat. I'm going to eat that bread. I'm going to eat that potato. I'm going to eat that um, piece of candy. It doesn't matter. You just say eat. With Potawatomi, often you have, sometimes you'll have four different types of verb depending on if something is animate or inanimate. <clears throat> animate, food, animate things are basically things that are living or spiritual in nature. Inanimate tend to be man-made or non-living, but it's a little more complicated than that. There are certain, it's particularly with food, there are certain foods that are considered animate and others that are considered inanimate. You know, and, and there's not a way to necessarily to know sometimes where you just got to get used to certain words being animate and you learn those words. <clears throat> Um, pen, for example, potato. Penique or penyek is how you say potatoes. And that's an animate food. Now, I get that one a little bit. If you take your bag of potatoes and you sit in your taz when you're covered, walk away, come back for it in a month, that thing's growing. There's roots and everything. It's, it's growing. So I kind of understand some of those. And then madaman, corn, madaman, it's animate. And corn was such an important food staple to our people. I can kind of understand that. Madaman. <clears throat> But occasionally they get a little confusing. Sheman is, is animate, but uh, daemon, a strawberry, is inanimate. Even though a strawberry is an important fruit that we use in some of our ceremonies, it's inanimate. So, <clears throat> but again, I'm just going to kind of glaze over this real quick because it's not something that you have to just harbor on, but you kind of got to realize that there are four types of verbs in Potawatomi. There's an animate, intransitive, which is like a basic statement verb, like I'm eating, I'm reading, I'm sitting. You're not talking about who you're reading to. You're not talking about what you're reading. You're just stating a fact, I'm doing it. Once you start talking about who you're doing it to, it changes. So if I said, I'm reading that book, something inanimate, it's a VTI, a transitive inanimate. So it's a person doing something to it. I'm touching the table. I'm picking up the book. I see uh, the chair. Um, I pick up the trash, you know, whatever. You're doing something. You're talking about doing something to it. A VTA verb is when you do something to something animate or a person. So with that one, it'd be like, I see him, he sees me, they see you, we see, we see you all. There's a lot more forms to them, but it's a different type of verb. Okay. And occasionally there's foods that are that are animate, like again, like potatoes. So you use a different verb. So because of that, our, our language is very specific. And like I say, we often have a certain word for certain concepts. So even like hot. Gajizo means he or she is hot. Gajatem get means it's hot, like the weather. That ate has to do with the sun making it happen. But you don't use gajatem get if you're talking about your stove. If you're talking about your stove, you say gajidem get. It's hot, like a stove. But gajabode, it's a hot liquid. Gajapkade, it's a hot metal or rock. So occasionally we have to be very specific about what we're talking about. And sometimes that's confusing for English speakers because they'll ask me, like, how do you say da da da? And I'll have to turn around and say, well, what are you talking about? What exactly do you mean? You know, because I have to know what you exactly you're dealing with sometimes to know if that's the exact way to say it. <clears throat> Great example here is with we, uh, with food. Nuisen, I'm eating. Nuisen, again, you're not talking about what you're eating. We snam get. It's, oh yeah, I didn't talk about VIIs. VIIs are often adjectives in English. A lot of things that are adjectives are verbs in Potawatomi. It's red, they're red. It's slimy, they're slimy. It's smooth, they're smooth. Um, it's hot, they're hot. You know, these are things in English, like the big, you know, the big red dog. Well, big and red are both uh, verbs in Potawatomi. It's big, or he or she is big. It changes, you know. So a lot of things that are adjectives are verbs. So our language is very verb heavy, if you will. Um, I've often heard it said maybe like 70% verb, if you will. English is probably like 30 or 40% verb. So it's definitely very verb heavy. That's one real difference there. Um, so, the we sin, I'm eating, we snam get, it's being eaten. That's a, it's just a VI. 
And then when you get to what you're eating, now you're talking about eating something inanimate, it changes, you'll see, from wisne to mijin. Now, mijin e zao Jesus. I'm eating the carrot. Zao Jesus is a carrot. Now, mijin e zao Jesus. And now if you're talking about corn, which happens to be animate, it changes again to mawa. Namawa om damen. Namawa om damen. I'm eating corn. So right there, you have three, four different ways of talking about eating that changes based on what you're eating. So you have to kind of be aware of that. But as you're getting started, don't worry too much about that. Just stick with your basic VAI one and you'll get, you'll get, you'll do fine with it. And eventually you'll learn what foods are animate, what are inanimate. It kind of works its way out, if you will. Nadu <clears throat> wajanda, I'm cooking. That's your basic, just I'm cooking. Not what you're, you're not talking about what you're cooking. Wajan dam get, it's cooking. Nigabaton e suksi with us. I'm cooking deer meat. You're cooking it. You're cooking something that's inanimate. Nigabaton e suksi with us. Okay, I got a question. Give me a second. Yeah, we us is always inanimate. We us is it's now it's not now no longer living. It's it's it, and that's why when we're talking about what we're eating, like food, you know, we have to put that uh, that we us on it. So good statement there. Yeah. Are you asking a question? Is it because no longer? I suppose it's because it's no longer living, is what I would say there. Um, go ahead, Justin. That was just me. Just kind of reinforcing some of the stuff you said earlier. Yeah, hey, uh, don't don't feel intimidated by the language. Just take it, take you have to be patient with yourself in the language. You can definitely learn the language. You just got to kind of take your time. Because we have a limited amount of time, I'm trying to cover a lot of stuff. So just kind of take in what you can and then put the other stuff, kind of shelve it to the side for now, and it'll make more sense. The more you get into it uh, later down the road, so and, think and about Justin, tone. Sorry, uh, I'm I'm sorry. I mean, I just I, I'm okay. off chance that this thing does shut off at, at five. I just wanted to <laughs> let you plug one more time. Uh, I you know kind of where to reach out for the, the folks here where does they can reach out. I, I don't think so, but I at this after after a year and a half of Zoom meetings, I never trust the technology. Okay, so if it cuts off at that, we'll we'll just continue it another day. But let me see how many slides I have left. We may have to continue some of this anyway. Just give me one second here. And you've got another, we've got another uh, class tomorrow at, uh, at, at, five, at the same time. <clears throat> okay, Friday. so we may, we may kind of shut off with this slide right here, and then we'll, we'll tomorrow we'll kind of get going with this again. So, nigabatoni suksi weas, I'm cooking deer meat. Nigabatoni suksi weas. Nigabashma gi panik, I'm cooking those potatoes. Something am it. So it went from gabaton to gabashma. And so it's changed from wajanda, wajandam gut to gabaton to gabashma so it's just something to be aware of not to not to really stress about but again what i would like to say here in kind of closing for a day is just simply remember to just <clears throat> use your language this is our language it's our language to to work with it's okay to make mistakes that's how you get better with it use it you know write it on facebook talk it to your friends or family when i started learning the language about 20 some years ago i started when i was about 16 or 17 learning the language. As, so I'm a second language learner. Um, I used to talk to my friends in Potawatomi all the time that weren't even Potawatomi. I would just talk to them. They knew I was trying to learn my language and they didn't care. There's still some of them that remember a few things that I've taught them, you know, 20 some years ago that still remember some of those words. So, you know, use your language, be comfortable with it. Uh, putting sticky notes up help, changing the, you know, incorporating words into your vocabulary where you just start using the word in Potawatomi. All of these things are also their acts of, you know, in a way of our, our using our language is us expressing our sovereignty, expressing our, our ability and reason to exist, if you will, as is, is a direct kind of pushback against that colonialism and that, and that system that tried to re eradicate us. I mean, the, the federal government tried at one point to just completely get rid of us by taking our language and culture away from us. And this is our opportunity to kind of keep moving forward as, as Nishinaabe, as Potawatomi people. So definitely use what you have and use what you learn. Don't be afraid. You can always ask me questions. I'm more than happy to ask questions about anything and everything. There's nothing wrong. Yeah, there's absolutely nothing wrong with using it. In fact, I use it with, I mean, if I could, I'd use it with everybody I could think of. I mean, I think it's in the, in the end, our way of thinking, our way of our worldview comes out through our language. And I think it makes the world a better place for people hearing it. I'll give you a quick story we'll end with here. Um, because you can get into trouble sometimes using your language or at least get a, a good chuckle out of it. 
Um, I remember one time I was at the grocery store. I, was at, I happened to be at the Walmart. Uh, not that I don't use our fire lake, but I was getting some like clothes. Oh, you admitted that. Recording, Justin? <laughs> but I was oh. at the Walmart and uh, in Shawnee and maybe it was before we had our fire lake. Hey, <laughs> but very anyway, good answer. Very uh, good answer. But, uh, it was a long time ago. And my daughter wanted to get some candy. And I said, uh, I said, oh, maybe I'll buy that for you. And I said it in pot on me. I said, eh, eh gonna bitch, wash kebuck, nui gish binadom. And I said, gonna bitch, gonna bitch means maybe or perhaps in Potawatomi. And I kid you not, when I said gonna bitch, every head that was in 50 feet of me, because I'm kind of loud, you know, turned and like swiveled, like, what did you just say to his kid? You know, gonna bitch, wash kebuck, nui gish binadom. But what it, the whole thing I said was, perhaps I'll buy that candy. But once I heard the rest of it, they're like, oh, okay. It can also get you randomly searched at airports. Um, I've sat around with some of our staff in the past where we were flying to a conference and we were chit-chatting and pottering back and forth. You know, everybody's, you know, is it when you're at an airport and you hear somebody speaking a language, you kind of, people were really trying to listen, trying to figure out what these guys are talking about. And nowhere in their mind do they think, oh, they're obviously speaking Potawatomi, you know. <laughs> so, nor would they have understood it anyway. And, uh, but we got randomly searched when we tried to get, when we got to the line to get on the plane. They pulled the three of us out and randomly searched our bags. So, it'll definitely, uh, it definitely sets off some, uh, some parameters with people. But it, it's good. It's good to use your language in public. It's good to use it and just, you know, be proud of who you are. And, and it's okay to make mistakes. And again, anytime you need assistance, you can email me. You can call me here at the office. You can um, talk to some of my staff. They're all willing to help you out with the language. Definitely uh, in that way. And please take take use some of the resources. We have a Potawatomi dictionary that's excellent uh, at PotawatomiDictionary.com. It's got over 9,600 words. Lots of audio files. A lot of example sentences, great resource. We've got uh, multiple platforms for learning the language online. We have our two YouTube channels. Um, we also have uh, uh, oh, our Facebook group where we teach live classes pretty regularly inside there. So definitely check these things out. And big wetch, Jack, thank you all for coming to this class. Um, and hopefully we'll see you maybe perhaps uh, next time. Uh, Aha, Bama Mina. Yo, that's it. Thank you, Justin. Have a good evening. Thank you. Appreciate it. Miigwech. Thank you.